I had uh, I had turkey and stuffing for dinner. It was delicious. Mm, that sounds good. Delicious. You hear what I'm saying? Not just good. It was delicious. Oh yeah, I love that again. I don't turkey like is it. not just for Thanksgiving. Turkey it's is not. For anytime Angelo wants it. Mm-hmm. And it was good. I'd love to have yeah. it. Not just on Thanksgiving. Anytime. It's really good with it. Only chicken. thing better than that is a fresh hot cup of coffee after dinner right there. Absolutely. A me big too. one. That's a, by me the too. way, people have <laughs> asked me about my cup. Mm-hmm. Okay. I'll take a look at that. <laughs> that's okay. a big cup. <laughs> that's a three cup cup. Mm. That's that's a 24 ounce cup. That's three eight ounce cups in there. Mm-hmm. I just don't have coffee in the morning. I have it in, at night too. I have to. Oh my God! I sleep like a baby with a cup of coffee. Me too. People, People think don't. I'm nuts. No, yeah, I have. I'm the same way. I have to have coffee at night. Oh, I love it. Mm-hmm. Love it. Because if I don't, it's like I get the headache going on. It's and some people have to have like soda. you too, huh? Mm-hmm. You know, coffee gets rid of headaches. Yeah, black it does. coffee. Black coffee mm-hmm. will cure a headache faster than an aspirin. Yeah, and you know that it's True. also been known to cure kids that are hyper as well. I do know that. Yeah, instead yep, of medication, that. people, instead of that medication, yep. give them a cup of black coffee. Give them a that's cup it. Of coffee. <laughs> mm-hmm. so yeah. Better than turn, that old turn medicine. Them, turn them from a pill junkie to a caffeine addict. <laughs> yep. And guess what's better than that pill that they tell you to give them? Oh my God! Please, we're gonna. We're going to end up destroying the population. <laughs> hey, it'll anyway, be better now, than those know pills. What the world needs more of laughter, ice cream. <laughs> yeah, that'd be good too. Ice cream and laughter and cotton candy and popcorn and sprinkles on top of the ice cream. Don't forget the sprinkles and the hot fudge and <laughs> sugar-free sprinkles. There you go. Mm-hmm. And, and actually, have you ever had sugar-free ice cream? I have actually. My dad is diabetic, so we have to have sugar free ice cream. It's delicious. Mm-hmm. I found, I can't even believe I found it, but I found a sugar free ice cream mm-hmm. that Briars makes. Mm. And it's, and oh, you know, there's another company that makes them. It's called Turkey Hill. Mm. Turkey Hill makes you ever Do you have Turkey Hill ice cream down there? No, just the Briars. Briars, yeah. Mm-hmm. It's it, Turkey Hill is like more creamier. Mm hmm. It's really, really good, but it's a little bit more money, but it's really good. Oh, yes. Um, but Briars, I love Briars ice cream, but mm-hmm. they make a sugar free ice cream. It's my favorite, too. It's uh, mint chocolate chip. Oh, free. mint chocolate chip. That's my favorite. Is it really? Mm-hmm. Are you lying to me? Oh, no, I, I swear. My you, is my you favorite. Ask- you can now ask my kids. Tr- Are you, you stealing can- my thunder in there? <laughs> no, you can ask my kids. Mint chocolate chip's my favorite. Is it? <laughs> yeah. That's, that's my. My mm-hmm. favorite. I loved that ice cream since I was like this big. Mm-hmm. Since I was a little mad dog, like a puppy yeah. mad dog. Right. But I was scared yeah. to buy ice cream for a while. <laughs> Mint chocolate chip is, is the best. And now mm-hmm. they got it in sugar free. Mm-hmm. Of course, the damage is already done, you know. Yeah. I'm freaking diabetic. Although I will tell you, mm-hmm. and this is a, 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 a commercial for Farziga. Uh-huh. I Farziga is good shit. If you're a diabetic, mm-hmm. try it because it shit works. Mm-hmm. Tell your doctor to give you some. Right. My and doctor if, gave it to me, and it's good. And it if anybody works. works for that company, we're looking for uh, sponsors. <laughs> if yes, if anyone from Farziga mm-hmm. is watching the show or listening, hit me up because I'm taking your product and it's saving my ass. It's yeah. good stuff. Or if you're listening. Please. Uh, or if you're listening, tell the, the people in the media department. Mm-hmm. Mad Dog and Pitbull want you as a sponsor. Oh, yes, absolutely. All right. Amelia, we're over here chit-chatting. <laughs> we're bullshitting around. Yeah, we got a show to do. <laughs> yeah, you want to do a show? Let's do it. Let's do Okay, we'll do a show tonight. I, <laughs> we could. Yeah. Yeah, we could. Well, go ahead, we'll do a show. Yeah. Some viewers may find the following video disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised.
On the air tonight, breaking news. Actor, songwriter, singer, performer, television star, Harry Belafonte has left us at the age of 95. You heard at the beginning of the show, Deo, the Banana Boat song. He is famous Mm -hmm. universally for that song. He was a recording artist, a television and film star. He was also a political activist. Much of what Harry Belafonte did helped end apartheid in South Africa, for which there is never enough thanks. Harry, thank you for your time on this little blue marble. Mm -hmm. Go on to heaven and make God smile, my friend. Oh, yes. I can hear him do the, I can see him do the conga line, everybody. I'm telling you, right, that's such a catchy little song, the Mm -hmm. banana boat song. Everybody just calls it Deo. Yep. Well, good Deo to everybody. Right? It's 4 o'clock in Los Angeles. It's 6 o'clock in Chicago. And in New York City tonight, Amelia, mm-hmm. it's 7 p.m. Yes. I am the Mad Dog, joined again, once again, by the Pitbull, Amelia, Pitbull Chapman, yes. on night two yes. of a special series we are doing on the untimely, mysterious, and unsolved celebrity deaths. Last night, we did Tupac Shakur. Mm -hmm. We did uh, Bob Saget last night. And uh, and uh, who else did we do? Anne Hayes. And, oh, yes, Anne Hayes was, oh, my God, that was a mess. That that episode was a mess last night. I can still hear that crash, just like you said. It's still in my mind. Yeah, you can see that car speeding down that street. Mm-hmm. And you just the hearing that crash mm-hmm. and knowing that she was in that car when it crashed, you wonder how did anybody survive? She she ended up dying from it, but in the hospital later on. In, but, yeah, yeah, but we don't know. Did she die naturally in the hospital or did somebody help her along? Amelia and I think. Somebody helped her along. I believe so. And there was no way that that car was going 80 miles an hour, like the report said. But like you said, you had it timed at 120, I think you said it was. No, 105. 105. The police so, department. Now, I have the police report. Mm-hmm. It says 105 mm-hmm. yeah. on a one-way street. That is so sad. In a re- Wait a minute. Here's the best part. Mm-hmm. In a residential neighborhood. In a, in a big money neighborhood, a high end, mm. you know, like these are, they're not, they're wealthy people, but they're not movie stars. Right. Mm-hmm. They're, the you know, they're working people, people mm-hmm. but they make a good living. Well, first of all, it's California. Yes. Okay? And they're making good money anyway, because mm-hmm. you need to make a good living just to live in California. Oh, yeah. At least 25 or more an hour or more. Oh. You got to make a hundred thousand a year just to get it like a, in that neighborhood. A, one, a one room flat somewhere. Mm-hmm. It's crazy. But tonight, Elvis, yes. Michael Jackson, yes. and Marilyn yes. Monroe. Amelia, can you tell me, answer this question for me, please? Mm-hmm. What is it about Marilyn Monroe that won't go away? I, she was too beautiful to uh, for me to say, you know what, that lady did not die by suicide. That's still the question that murder. murder and you murder, know what? Murder. Everybody's saying that, too. Mm-hmm. They're all saying Marilyn had, you know, yeah, she had issues. Okay, yes, we mm-hmm. already know that. Uh, she liked the party. Yeah, we already know that, who too. Who doesn't? But, you know. Well, she was screwing around with two married men. Yeah. They happened to be brothers. Mm-hmm. One happens to be, oh, the president, let's just say, okay? Yep. And the other one is the attorney general. Mm-hmm. Okay. Other than that, you know. <laughs> yeah, but like they say, it takes two to tango. Yeah, well, in that case, it took three to tango. <laughs> that one, yep. When one's you tired, know? the other one stands or up. I, I read, I, I just want to show people something. That mm-hmm. You think I'm kidding. Hold on. Yeah, it's it was just unbelievable. I mean, she had her career going at the time. She had everything going for her. And she I had- have um mm-hmm. thanks to Amelia. And I said, 
<laughs> no printing anything today. So what did I do like a dope? I have in my hand, folks. Yeah, he said no printing for me, but look what he did. <laughs> yeah, and the right. <laughs> so much for listening to myself. <laughs> <laughs> but what I have in my hand mm -hmm. is a sample mm -hmm. of the unredacted uh -huh. FBI reports on Marilyn Monroe. Now, when I say unredacted, Mm -hmm. This is the stuff that they let out. Mm -hmm. Okay, the FBI has unredacted a hundred thousand, at least a hundred thousand Maryland documents. There's only fifty-one pages in my hand. Mm -hmm. Okay, the papers alone in Marilyn Monroe's file mm -hmm. would fill my house. Oh my God! What? I'm not even. Uh, listen to me. Did you hear what I said? Yes. A hundred thousand or more pieces of paper. Mm. That's like a library, Mill. Oh, absolutely. And That's and like I, a library. It would never end. I, I, to be honest with you, I don't think it ever end. No, you wouldn't. No. You, you you kidding? Mm -mm. You would die of old age counting this shit. Mm -hmm. Right? Because with every Crazy. little with every little Something chapter would come another chapter. Woman. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but you know what? There's something about that woman mm -hmm. that just she's absolutely beautiful, mm -hmm. gorgeous woman that by all accounts, a nice person, but a little fucked up in the head. Mm -hmm. um, she lived a, on the edge. You know, look, hey, messing mm -hmm. around with the president isn't exactly safe. OK, no, it's not messing around with his brother isn't exactly safe. It came with the price, and unfortunately, you she know, paid it. Having, I got a, I have a, some papers. We're going we're gonna to talk about it. I mm -hmm. had to issue a disclaimer tonight because yes. we're going to talk tonight about group sex. Mm -hmm. We're going to talk about threesomes and foursomes, and we're going to mm -hmm. talk about the kind of kinky stuff Marilyn was into. She right. was a sex pot, but she wasn't mm -hmm. just a sex pot on the the movie screen. Mm -hmm. She was a nymphomaniac in real life. She loved yes. sex. Yes, she did. Which made her even more appealing to men. Mm -hmm. You know, the problem is, again, as I said, when one of those men happens to be the president of the country, mm -hmm. you have a problem. Yeah. A big, big problem. And yep. then the other guy happens to be like the third in charge in the country. Mm -hmm. Okay. The attorney general. Because if the, something happens to the president and the vice president can't take over, somebody, yep, I there you think go. the attorney general's the next one in line. Yes. Either him or the secretary of state. I'm not sure mm -hmm. how it works. But point mm -hmm. I'm trying to make, folks, is there was a lot of people lining up. To get yeah. a piece of Maryland. So, Nelia, mm -hmm. um, that's one of those cases you and I actually did already. We, we've actually done this. At least three times. Oh, my God. How many times now? Three, at least. And it's still more well, more it, questions. Yeah, but answered. now, let, let me just be fair, though. I have to I have to say this. Um, to be fair, she's right. Mm -hmm. Amelia's right. We did three Three Marilyn shows, but mm -hmm. they were Marilyn shows in conjunction with Which John is? F. Kennedy and Bobby Kennedy. Because mm -hmm. we did a whole show where we just explored what you know Bobby and John were up to. Mm -hmm. And then we figured Marilyn in the mix, and we showed pictures. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's they pictures, did. folks. They're yeah. out on the internet, and I got mm -hmm. news for you. I found some of the love notes tonight, too. Yes. I did. Yes. So I'll tell you what. Yeah, and I have them here. Mm -hmm. I'll read them to you. Um, tonight, we're going to talk about, uh, and let me just bring everybody up to speed here. Mm -hmm. We're going to talk about Elvis. Mm -hmm. Elvis Presley, that's another case of a guy that is so beloved. Yes. He was so, the, his, the news of his passing. Mm -hmm. 
just like shocked everybody so much they didn't believe it. I, I know everybody just he was just like like the king like of rock and roll still, but everybody was just like that is like the best singer in the world. Everybody was like like his brother. But here's or... the thing though, it wasn't it's not even that. Mm-hmm. Although it's part of it, but it's, it's really not mm-hmm. even that. It's the fact that he was only 42. That's very young. Marilyn That's Monroe young. was only 36. You know, you know what we're saying here? Very, very young. Ve- very young. C- look at today. The singer, the, the gentleman was 95 years old. Yeah, Harry Belafonte. Just, yeah. just to give you some perspective, all right? You ready mm-hmm. for this? Mm-hmm. Michael Jackson outlived Elvis, okay? Mm-hmm. 50 years old. 50. Okay. What does that tell you? Mm. Okay. What what does that tell you? Just okay. Uh, yeah. Even Lisa Marie Presley, rest in peace, lived mm-hmm. longer than her dad. Yes. And but died the same way. Mm-hmm. She died the same way her father did. Rest in peace. Yes. Um tonight we open up the show with Elvis. What? Really happened, Amelia. What happened to Elvis? Mm-hmm. Was uh, was Elvis murdered? Some people say he was murdered. He was taken out by the mafia. Mm-hmm. Was it a suicide? Was it an accidental drug overdose? Did he take the wrong medicine? Bad medicine. Elvis had two pills that looked exactly alike. Mm-hmm. One was hydrocodone, which was a pain pill. Uh-huh. The other one was to treat a twisted colon. Uh-huh. Okay. Um, was Elvis whisked away into witness protection? Uh-huh. Was he the target of a murder for hire plot? Was he tired of being Elvis? Like Tupac, did he uh-huh. use a body double? Did he want to watch his kids grow up and his family grow up? The list is endless. Amelia, mm-hmm. you got a half a dozen things there to pick from. Give me a, give me the pit bull's best guess on this one. I think he actually. Where does your, where does your heart lie on this? What well, does your gut tell you? From me watching a picture of him, supposedly, I'm going to say supposedly because that's where I'm come, going at. Uh, him in a coffin, I'm going to say that he was whisked away and put in a witness protection program. Tell everybody why. Because I believe that he owed a lot of money to a mafia and he was wanting to hide. You're not the only person who believes that. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you what I heard recently, very recently. You're going to, you'll understand when I say this, you know, Lisa Marie Presley, Elvis's daughter recently passed away. Mm-hmm. When she died, the Church of Scientology came up again. Mm-hmm. Okay. You know, Lisa Marie was a Scientologist. Yes. She was a Scientologist. Was, yes. Mm-hmm. And she left. Mm-hmm. And there's a reason she left. Because they knew her name was Presley. Mm-hmm. And they knew that she had access to all of Elvis's money. And they wanted it. Mm -hmm. And she put the kibosh on that. Now, it's very interesting. Priscilla Presley is still a Scientologist. Yes. Still today. Even though her daughter's no longer here. I will tell you that Priscilla Presley does not use Presley money. She uses her own money, mm-hmm. okay, to finance her Scientology. Because it's not cheap being a Scientologist. It's very, very expensive. Mm-hmm. So the rumor was, the word is that Lisa Presley, Lisa Marie Presley told Scientology to F off because she wasn't shy about telling people to F off. No. <laughs> Not at all. Not at all. Um, and Elvis, at the time, um, was paying a lot of money to Scientology for Priscilla. 
Mm-hmm. Okay. And when he stopped paying, they got a little irritated. Mm-hmm. Couple that with the fact. That Elvis's father made a very, very bad, very, very bad mm-hmm. business deal yes. involving two airplanes. Mm-hmm. Okay. You know, um, Amelia, recently you came to me and you said, Mad Dog, did you know that one of Elvis's airplanes is in the desert? Yes. And I said, yeah, I know it's there. I know why it's there and I know how long it's been there. Mm-hmm. That's one of the airplanes that Elvis's father was responsible for fucking up. Ah, uh, that's why. Elvis's daddy, Vernon Presley, nice guy, but not real smart, mm-hmm. and did not know how to manage money at all. Like, at all. Okay? Mm-hmm. Now, what happened was, imagine that. What happened was this guy named Peter Pro um, said, uh, you know, Vernon, you owe me some money. And Vernon said, no, I don't. Uh. And Peter Pro said, yes, you do. Take a look at this contract. If you don't pay me, I'm going to kill your son. <gasps> Whoa. And then you won't have any money. Of course, your son, Elvis, he's the cash cow around here. Hmm. Okay? And I believe that's what happened. I believe Elvis was up to his eyeballs in debt. Yes. He was worth, you've heard it before, folks, I'm going to say it again. He was worth more dead than alive. Mm-hmm. So guess what happened? Elvis died. Mm-hmm. But did Elvis Presley die? No. Nope. Elvis died. Elvis Aaron Presley. A-R-O-N, by the way. That's his legal name. Not A-A-R-O-N, like it's on his grave. Uh-uh. Okay? He Elvis was very superstitious. Was very superstitious. Mm-hmm. Let's take a look at this. Mm-hmm. Are you over there? Are over here? Are you there? Where you are? Are you over here? Nick, you come right in here, sweetie. That's it. You face that way. Turn right around that way. How are you? Hi. And one second. We're ready to roll. One second. And is she pretty? Is she pretty? Huh? Beautiful. Okay. Good dog. Uh, Elvis, I'd uh, like to introduce you to Monique Brave from the Sioux Indian tribe here in Rapid City, and Mayor LaCroix, who's uh, got a presentation for you also. Elvis, on behalf of the citizens of Rapid City and the community, welcome to. By the way, Mm -hmm. I want to show you something, and I'm going to go pull this back a little bit. Mm -hmm. Hold on. Let me see. Hold on. Hey, Marilyn, what are you doing? (laughs) Hold on just a second. Where are you? Mm -hmm. I'm going to, I got to find this. Hold on. Mm Mm-hmm. All right, here we go. Just mm-hmm. let's, watch, let's watch this for a second. Mm-hmm. Hey, Nick, you come right in here, sweetie. That's it. You face I that way. Per- 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 Turn right around, around that way. How are you? I want to show you somebody. Hi. And in one second, we're ready to roll. One second. And is she pretty? Is she pretty? Huh? Beautiful. Okay. Good job. Uh, Elvis. Amelia, you see the guy? In the back of the room there. Uh-huh. With the curly hair in the back. Yeah. The guy uh-huh. with the curly hair and the glasses. Uh-huh. uh-huh. His name is Al Strada. Okay. Okay. Remember that name because it's going to come up a couple times in tonight's show. Okay. That's Al Strada. Just don't forget that name. Okay. All right. You'll understand why. So I'd like to introduce you to Monique Brave from the Sioux Indian Tribe here in Rapid City and Mayor LaCroix, who's uh, got a presentation for you also. Elvis, on behalf of the citizens of Rapid City and the community, welcome to Rapid City. And we appreciate you being our first concert in our new auditorium. And this says so on our plaque. It's for your grand opening concert here. 
thank you very much for being with us. Thank you. Very nice. And Monique? Is she pretty? Hi, Monique. Hi. This is a medallion of life for you, Elvis, from the Sioux, from the Sioux Nation. Oh, that's lovely. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay. 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 Good luck to you, Elvis. I just can't believe he's dead. It's terrible. Elvis Presley did not die August 16, 1977. This woman is Gail Brewer Giorgio. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you a little something about her. I met Gail Brewer Giorgio in 1980. She was, of course, much, much younger mm -hmm. back then. She wrote a book called Orion. Okay. And she wrote another book called Is Elvis Alive? Um, now, keep in mind, she is 85 years old today, cool. these days, okay? Mm -hmm. She's still convinced that Elvis did not die then, and she's still convinced that he's alive today in 2023 at the age of 87. And she thinks that she can prove it. Hmm. Just keep that in mind. Let's watch. Best-selling author Gail Brewer Giorgio believes without a shadow of a doubt that Elvis faked his own death. A topic she wrote about in her 1988 blockbuster book, Is Elvis Alive? Elvis filled out the medical examiner's report. Elvis wrote on documents after his death. To prove it. And she's not lying. Mm-hmm. The, they compare you can't make this shit up folks right this is the kind of weird shit that happened in the, the, the in the in the months and weeks following elvis's death mm -hmm. you're looking at the medical examiner's report okay guess what mm -hmm. it's elvis's signatures on all those papers he wrote it he filled it out and how could a dead man write his own signature yeah wait a minute Mm -hmm. It gets good. You saw Elvis in that clip. Mm -hmm. How much do you think he weighed in that clip? Oh, gosh. He was at least, what, 300 pounds? Glad you said that. Mm -hmm. Can you see the weight on that death certificate? Mm, not very clear, but you... You want to know what it says? Mm -hmm. It says 170. No way. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> that... No, that might have exactly. been the person that I saw in the coffin, but not that Elvis that I saw in that clip. It says 170, height, six feet tall, weight, mm. 170. No. Yeah, 170 in 1956. Or the person that was the fake person that I saw in that coffin that was uh, sweating. <laughs> well, let's take a look. She had an expert compare the handwriting on Presley's medical examiner report to a 1970 letter Elvis had written to then President Nixon. She said certified document examiner Paul Wiest confirmed a match. But the same person who wrote the letter to oh. President Nixon also wrote the Elvis Presley death certificate. She also reviewed hundreds of... Did you see the signatures? It matched perfect. Perfectly. I'm, I'm glad the pit bull said it before I did. The signatures matched up perfectly mm -hmm. see people can change a lot of things but they can't change two things they mm -hmm. can't change their fingerprints and they can't change the way they write they cannot fbi files on elvis presley and thinks he faked his death because he had been targeted by members of the mob and duped during a transaction involving his jet star airplane that's the airplane that you and i were talking about mm -hmm. Amelia, the one the jet star mm -hmm. it's in the desert you know why it's in the desert? 
to hide that's it. where he ordered it to go. Mm-hmm. Yeah. His father screwed that business, screwed that deal up. So, but in in the in in the long run, in the final analysis, actually mm-hmm. Vernon gave Elvis a new lease on life. Because he got out of being Elvis the entertainer mm-hmm. and became Elvis Presley again. Yes, Elvis okay. the person. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. Thank you. Thank mm-hmm. you for pointing that out. Mm-hmm. Now, let's watch. This is an FBI investigation. They were out to prosecute the people that Elvis testified against. Okay, did you hear what she said? Mm-hmm. He did testify. In a secret hearing, he testified in court. Mm-hmm. It, the, the transcripts are available now. They weren't available then. No. Remember, mm-hmm. he was dead. Yes. Okay. They had a contract out on Elvis's life. He was scared to death. Okay. Really scared. Then, a decade later, in 1988, after her best-selling book was published, Gail said she received yet another piece of evidence in support of her theory. And I believe this woman. Now, you're going to hear oh, yes. something that's going to blow your mind. You believe her? Oh, absolutely. She has Listen concrete to evidence. She's going to make you believe her big time. Because the Elvis is speaking from the grave. Watch this. Theory. I received a call from Elvis and put the suction cup on, hit uh, record, and the rest is history, so they say. She claims Elvis called her in the middle of the night. During their lengthy conversation, she said they talked about her book and even discussed his whereabouts. But he mostly lived on the West Coast of Hawaii. I don't talk to the <laughs> Okay, Hawaii. That's not fitting you down. The idea now question Mm -hmm. was that Elvis on that tape or was it like a a, a really really good impersonator it was hard to determine because it was kind of it could have been an impersonator trying to say it was him uh you know making her think that because you know crank crank calls because of the books that she wrote so it had to have been uh, we had to get an expertise I it was an impersonator myself Mm-hmm. Until, until he said something that nobody else would know. Mm-hmm. Okay. Nobody. Else, you heard what Gail said. Are you in Hawaii? Mm-hmm. And you didn't hear anything, mm-hmm. right? He didn't say nothing. Right. He said he he pauses for a minute because mm-hmm. he's thinking, oh, maybe she's on to me, right? Mm-hmm. But then he said something that nobody expected. He said, I'm in Washington. Why is that important? That Elvis could somehow still be alive. Because Elvis, uh, people didn't know this, but Elvis Mm -hmm. Presley had an apartment in Washington, D.C. Oh. And he's had that apartment since 1971. What happened in 1971 with Elvis and Washington? Very simple. Elvis met President Nixon at the White House. Mm. And if you don't believe that, go online and look at the picture of the two of them in the Oval Office. It's a real picture. It's the most requested picture of the National Archives. Then And still today, the picture of Elvis Presley and President Richard Nixon in the White House. I've is part of an American phenomenon that some people with suspicious minds can't let go of. This is the picture. And here is another piece of evidence. Remember, you heard me say, don't forget the name Al Strada. Right. This is why. Watch this guy. 
His name is Mike Joseph. Listen to his story. It will scare you. I'm obsessing about the Elvis pool house photo. Well, in my belief, this is Elvis sitting behind the screen door in the bathhouse. Former record producer Mike Joseph said he met Elvis years ago and took his family to Memphis four months after Elvis's death. I don't believe he died that day. Mike took several photographs during his trip to Graceland and noticed something unusual with this one. After magnifying the image, he spotted what looked like Elvis sitting in a chair behind the glass door to the pool house, just a few feet from his grave. I firmly believe it was Elvis Presley. I sent the photograph to Kodak. Kodak verified that the picture is real. It hasn't been doctored in any way whatsoever. Now, mm -hmm. do you know what he's talking about? The pool house photo. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. A lot of people will come forward and they will say that wasn't Elvis in that chair. It was Al Strada. Mm -hmm. Okay. You saw Al Strada, what he looks like. His, he resembles Elvis in the face, but there's a difference. His hair Al is Al Strada's curly. got very curly hair. Mm -hmm. And very it looks more curly reddish hair. color. It looks like a big afro. Mm -hmm. Okay? And it's like reddish Al color Strada, brown. Al Strada also happens to be Hawaiian. Mm -hmm. Okay? Hawaiian. Mm -hmm. Why does that make a difference? Well, it makes a difference because he's darker than Elvis. Mm -hmm. You know? And it looks, uh, in the facial features, too, it's a little different, too, in a way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Um, it looks like it's going to be time for our commercial as well here. Oh, yes, we do. Mm -hmm. we got, you know what? Mm -hmm. Thank you for reminding me mm -hmm. that. Uh, we're gonna, i tell you what, folks. Mm -hmm. Let's jump around off of this break here. Um, we're mm -hmm. going to hit a hard spot. And we'll be right back after our commercial message. Yes. Don't go nowhere. Do you have sweaty balls or volleyball netty balls? It's time to make them ready balls. The Manscaped.com lawnmower 3.0 will do the job and clean your knob with its patented no nick head, so your head will function as desired. Enter promo code Wrestling Future. For a generous 20% discount, that's Enter Wrestling Future for a 20% discount. Manscaped.com and Wrestling with the Future, going balls to the walls with Manscaped.com and the Lawnmower 3.0, your balls will thank you. And so will we. What's the Buzz Podcast wants to welcome Radioactive FM 88.6 in Wellington, New Zealand. Radio Perth, Australia, and RTL Radio 102.5 in Milan, Italy. Welcome aboard, and welcome to the bus. We are back. Pitbull, <laughs> we're back. Yes. <laughs> All right. Uh, what do you want to do next? Uh, we're going to be doing talking about Michael Jackson. You want to do Michael next? Mm -hmm. All right, let's talk a little bit about Michael. We've done... How many shows have we done on Michael? Two or three now? At least, I think we did two, and then we did some uh, with a guest. We had two shows. Did we did like two. Up. Oh, you know mm -hmm. what? Yeah, you're right. Mm -hmm. We did two full episodes, mm -hmm. and then we did kind of like a conspiracy episode. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. We're going. Uh, uh, first of all, I want to uh, take the time in advance. Mm -hmm. I want to thank Pearl Jr. in advance. Yes. Yeah. I also want to thank Elbow Grease Productions in advance mm -hmm. for the use of these uh, clips. Um, mm -hmm. They are invaluable in so many ways because there are people that are saying that Pearl Jr. is talking out of both sides of her mouth. And mm -hmm. the one and she's saying yes. that, no, she thinks that Michael died. But then she's doing all of these videos about Michael is alive. Well, what is it, Pearl? Is he dead or is he alive? <laughs> so, and I mean, I have video of Pearl saying, "Yeah, that she thinks he's dead." Yeah, I mean, we well, have it here because she said it here. Talking, why are we having this conversation mm. if Michael is dead? Here's why. Let's take a look. 
Michael Jackson, is he dead as a doornail or hiding in plain sight? What do you think, Amelia? The king of pot, Michael Jackson. Um, I believe he's still alive. I believe he is, and I think I know where he's at, actually. Mm-hmm. Based on information that was given to me by a very close source to the Jackson family, and I mean a real, for real, no bullshit, a real source close to the Jackson family, I believe Michael is hiding in plain sight. I really, really do. Michael would be about 61 now, right? Mm Mm-hmm. Um, 60, somewhere 61, yeah. 62, right? Mm, something Some, like that. Mm-hmm. Okay. Let's take a look at Michael Jackson. Officially passed away in 2009, most of his fans never believed it. Because they had evidence that they wouldn't make them believe it. Fans think that Michael Jackson has been wearing many disguises since 2009 and has been caught on camera. In this video, we will examine in detail all the moments that were captured on cameras after Michael's death. By the way, this is from Pearl Jr.'s film called Believe. Um, I highly recommend it. It, It's an amazing piece of work. Mm -hmm. Uh, Pearl Jr. has been a guest on this show uh, twice. Um... Because of one reason or another, I did not invite Pearl back on the show. Quite frankly, I don't feel like fighting with her. Mm -hmm. Um, And it would have turned into a fight. So let's just listen. Take a look at this. You want to talk about Anne Heche, right? Mm-hmm. Jumping up off the gurney. Okay. Remember what we keep saying, Amelia. Mm-hmm. Dead bodies don't move, right? Exactly. They don't. Right, well, you, you tell me if they move or not. Watch. Michael Jackson's body moving while being transported by helicopter. And then a person's recording of again? Michael stepping out of the ambulance. You want to see it again? That one it is really questionable right there. Well, let's watch. Mm-hmm. Let's see. It's pretty remarkable. Oh, sorry, mm-hmm. Annie. Mm-hmm. Is. Let's take a look. I want you to take a look inside that helicopter. Mm-hmm. The body is moving. Mm-hmm. Moving. Okay. It's all going to make sense to you folks when I tell you. It's all going to make sense, and you're Mm -hmm. going to see something no one's ever seen before. Or a few people have. Let's put Mm -hmm. it. Let's just watch. Take a listen. Michael Jackson's body moving while being transported by helicopter, and then a person's recording of Michael stepping out of the ambulance in which he was being transported were his first. Mm-hmm. Okay, did you see what we saw? Yes, he, his body was moving, and supposedly he was pronounced dead at home. You know, a body yeah. doesn't move in a, when you're pronounced dead at home. Well, again, as in the case of Elvis, Michael mm-hmm. Jackson was heavily in debt. Mm-hmm. Michael was spending a lot more money than he was making. Mm-hmm. That coupled with the fact, remember, you got to remember something. Michael just came off of a lot of court dates. Yes. Going to court for pedophilia. Yeah. Going to court for inappropriate behavior. Mm-hmm. Going to court for child molestation. These are serious Really serious Very. accusations. Mm-hmm. The other thing is, and we, we cannot lose sight of this. Mm-mm. As weird and strange and bizarre as Michael Jackson was. Or is, I should say. Mm-hmm. 
because I believe he's still around. Mm -hmm. As weird and strange as he is, he does love children. Mm -hmm. And he is good to people. Very. And he spent a lot of money helping people, including the Michael Jackson burn unit mm -hmm. at Santa Monica Hospital. Take a look at this. This is, again, you're looking at a piece of video of a body inside a helicopter moving. Dead bodies don't move. No. And it's not just shifting, folks. It's moving, mm -hmm. okay? It's moving. Michael Jackson's body moving while being transported by helicopter, and then a person's recording of Michael stepping out of the ambulance in which he was being transported were his first time. Been, that's mm -hmm. already been proven to be Michael. That's already been, that's out there. Mm -hmm. it, and they can't deny it. It's already no. been proven. Times being caught on camera. When the ambulance video was watched by millions of people, someone wanted to destroy the effect of these images and immediately a fiction was made, acting like this video was a prank video. But the Germans had not nope. managed to do the same video in a hurry. There were differences between the original video and the video shot by the Germans. For example, yeah. in the original video, the guard raises his left hand, while in the German video, the guard raises his right hand. First of all, how can this be a joke? Who would dare to make such a joke when the sadness of a pop star who has 3 billion fans around the world is fresh on the fans? They didn't think it through. The they did people not. that were faking the video, they didn't think it through. And nope. where do you see this guy? The, the so-called Michael lookalike. Uh, watch this. This was completely... It's hilarious. Okay, watch. Oh. ...made to cover up the original incident. They couldn't cover the helicopter incident because the whole world was broadcasting live at that moment. Thank you. <laughs> now, this mm -hmm. is Randy Jackson's car. Mm -hmm. Inside the car is Randy Jackson, Michael Jackson's brother. Mm -hmm. Joe Jackson, Randy and Michael Jackson's father. Mm -hmm. Okay. There's also someone else in the car. Jermaine Jackson, the oldest of the brothers. Mm -hmm. Let's take a look at the video. Two days after the date of Michael's death, Randy Jackson and Marlon Jackson, Michael's... And by the way, just so everybody knows, these videos are in the public domain. <laughs> there is no copyright infringement on these videos. These videos have been shown on television. They've been shown worldwide, and they are not private videos. They are actual public domain videos, and they are free for anybody to use them, including us tonight. So, there you go. Brothers arrived in front of Michael's house in their car, but they weren't the only ones in the car. Who was that masked man? Okay. Mm -hmm. Keep in mind, mm -hmm. this is two days after Michael died, and they're all in the car laughing. It's a big, they're all having a big joke, right? Mm -hmm. It's a big laugh. Michael, you got away with it. I can imagine what they're saying to him. Michael, you got away with it. Watch yeah. this. Somebody's actually going to turn like this and talk to him. They're going to mm -hmm. turn and watch. You're going to see yourself. And sitting in the back seat, we wonder. If they turn and talk to him. And why were Michael's brothers Marlon and Randy laughing? Of course, it wasn't just Marlon and Randy who were laughing. Now let's move on to the ceremony full of funny things. Twelve day of Michael Jackson. This is Michael Jackson's so-called funeral. Mm -hmm. The first thing that's very, very obvious. The casket. Right. Michael Jackson was five foot ten. He was a tall guy 510 he was a dancer mm -hmm. it was all legs the casket that you're looking at was five foot six in order to put him in that casket you have to cut his feet off right exactly at the, at the ankles okay 
You'd have to cut four inches of his legs off mm -hmm. for him to fit. Watch. Jackson's death on July 7, 2009, a public memorial service was held at the Staples Center in Los Angeles, California. I'm talking about the place where the elephants with the biggest show on earth, written on them were circulated one night before the ceremony. Almost the entire art community attended the memorial ceremony. Michael's family's strange actions were talked a lot about at the ceremony. If only Michael's son Prince Jackson had forgotten about his father's pain. Yeah, now, um, Paris Jackson mm -hmm. and Prince Jackson, they're chewing gum, they're blowing bubbles. Mm -hmm. Don't you think somebody would have said something? Yes, like act more like sad. Don't be blowing bubbles. Act like you know this is. Look, he's got. Look at the kid. He's got a mouthful of bubble gum. There's a big yeah. wad of bubble gum. Mm -hmm. Watch. This is just. I, I have to tell people. All I can say is, keep watching. Keep watching. Mm -hmm. Watch. You guys listening on radio. This is one time I would love you to see the show. Go yeah. to YouTube and watch this stuff. It's amazing. He was blowing gum at the ceremony. Her daughter Paris Jackson, on the other hand, took care of her headset in her ear. Yeah, did you guys notice that? Mm -hmm. She had a headset. She was wearing head like a, a an earpiece. Yeah, like she's going to be told look. what to say. Yeah, look at it. She mm -hmm. you can see it. Mm -hmm. They're being told. She's being told what to say. Yes. Watch this. You think you're an actress, Amelia? You want to practice your acting skills? Watch this kid. She's good. Was she listening to music or was she receiving instructions from someone about what to say at the ceremony? I want to show you that again because I want you to look what she did. She looked down and she looked right back up. Watch what uh -huh. she did. To music or was she receiving instructions from someone about what to say at she the ceremony? Into it. If you notice, uh -huh. she corrects her headset during the conversation. And look at this. Mm -hmm. After making his tearful speech with the directives she received and hugging his aunt, they smile and go inside. Mission completed. Mm -hmm. How was you I? See aunt, how quick they Paris, got her who allegedly yeah. studied acting before the date of her father's death, did not seem to be able to demonstrate sufficient acting. The only happy ones at the ceremony were not just the prince or Paris, with Michael's father, together with his brothers, the ceremony's mood was like a wedding. Anyway, would Michael have been missing if the entire art community had attended the ceremony? Perhaps he wanted to go down in history as the first and only person to attend his own funeral. There were two mysterious people at the funeral, thought to be Michael, and they were both almost next to each other. Right next to each other. This could have mm -hmm. been a target diversion that was made by Michael. Yes, this man in the hat looked a lot like one of Michael's previous disguises. But I'm voting for the blonde woman. I think the man... I want you to take a very good look at the blonde mm -hmm. woman. Yeah, they said take something a very about good that. Look. Now, mm -hmm. either that is the ugliest woman on planet Earth, mm -hmm. or it's a he/she. Right. Okay. I want you to take notice. The man in the hat. You're going to see him again. Mm -hmm. Not just yet, but take notice of the woman. Watch this. Very carefully. In the hat was a target diversion. If we look at the blonde woman's skin color, the Adam's apple, laryngeal protrusion, on her throat, which is usually seen in men, and the appearance of a black hair under her hair, we see that it's a great match with Michael. Perfect match. A identical match. Identical. Mm -hmm. That hair was a wig. The person next to him holding hands claimed to be Michael's former bodyguard. Michael's sister Janet's look at the blonde woman seemed to say it all. Mm -hmm. And that was the giveaway for me. Yes. I watched that live. When she turned over, mm -hmm. she knew exactly what was going on. She knew exactly, exactly what was going on. That's Michael mm -hmm. right there. You're looking at him in living color. On September 3rd, by the way, you know who Dave Dave is? That gentleman right there? No, that's oh. Larry King. Sweetheart. Dave Dave? Never heard of that Dave Dave, no. Okay, you're going to see Dave Dave. Watch. 2009, three months after the date of Michael Jackson's death, there was a program by Larry King on the CNN channel. This was also the day of Michael's burial. 
there was a special guest on the program. Dave Dave, aka David Rothenberg, came on the program to talk about Michael. Dave, who survived the hands of a psychotic father in 1983, had severe burns on 90% of Dave's body. In 1984, Michael Jackson, who was on the stage for a Pepsi commercial, nearly died in an accident called Pepsi Accident. When the explosion that was supposed to happen on stage happened earlier than it should have, Michael was stuck in the middle of the explosion and his hair caught fire. There were third de- Watch what happens to his hair, Amelia. Watch this. And he's going to spin. Oh, my God. You didn't see that before. Uh-uh. Yeah, watch. Has opened a burn center by donating $1.5 million to help all patients who have suffered bushings Michael of... Michael Jackson Burn Center in San Monica. Hospital was also the hospital that treated Michael to survive. In 1985, he visited the Brotman Memorial Hospital and took care of the patients. Dave Dave, a.k.a. David, was one of the patients treated for burns at Rothenburg. Jackson, who had established an emotional bond with him, took him under his protection and took over all the treatment costs. In fact, when Dave Dave turned 18, he even got a job thanks to Michael. Michael treated Dave like a father, provided Dave with lifelong emotional support and friendship to make him forget about the terrible life that his father put Dave through. Michael had helped Dave with what he can do to a world full of cruel people with love by showing him love, friendship, fatherhood. After all this support, Dave Dave felt that he owed a huge debt of loyalty to Michael. Years later, when the dates showed 2009, Dave had an opportunity to pay off this loyalty debt, even if it was small. Michael Jackson wanted to show that he was alive and relieve the sadness of his fans. And he had to... Do you get what's going on here? Oh, uh, that looks just like Michael Jackson. It, the hello there. That's where we're going with this. That's exactly where we're going with this. Exactly where we're going. You know, Michael loved disguises. Uh, yes, absolutely. And you know, he loved to dress up. Mm-hmm. This is like the tip of the iceberg. I said he's hiding in plain sight. Mm-hmm. Okay. Let's continue to watch. What's going on? Do a crazy action for this. He chose the CNN channel that the whole world was watching. And he chose a disguise in which he could easily enter. Dave, who loved him like a father, had given him permission to disguise himself as him for a day. Michael's fans watching the live broadcast immediately noticed the oddity and showered the broadcast with tweets. With his voice, movements, eyes and timid looks that convey a message this was definitely Michael Jackson himself. The real Dave Dave didn't have that shoulder width, but the shoulder width of the person in the program was too long. It was as if he was wearing a costume. The real Dave's eye colors were also different. The number of fingers was also different. And, of course, their voices. Story, Larry. Um, it was kind of, um, the visit to his Encino house was very impromptu, and it was kept a secret by my mother. Okay. That voice sounded just like Michael Jackson's voice. That, that's exactly where the, this guy's going with it, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Now, look at this guy here. Look at his shoulders. They're very wide. Mm-hmm. Dave Dave was a very, very thin young man. Okay? Mm-hmm. Very, very thin. This guy's got very wide shoulders. Michael had wide shoulders and a, a thin waist because he's a mm-hmm. dancer. Right. He's a dancer. Okay, watch, just watch. Again, how many times can I say just watch? Mm-hmm. Sit back, have a joint, and watch. See you watch. <laughs> and I had always been... Fans started to make videos to prove that their voices matched fully. But Dave Dave already left the area and wasn't nowhere to be found. What was Miko Brando, the son of Marlon Brando, who was next to Dave on the broadcast, laughing at on the day of Michael's burial? Michael was alive, and he was sitting next to him in disguise. Have you ever noticed the old man who appeared in the Hollywood Tonight clip that aired in March 2011 before? This old man, who was quite mobile... Okay. Remember I said keep an eye on the guy from the uh, the funeral, the old mm-hmm. guy there? Mm-hmm. 
you're going to see something similar. Almost the same costume, but a different hat. We'll take a look at this. Let's, uh, let's just let it play out. For his age, was dancing quite well. Michael was again trying to sneak into his clips to give us the message that he was alive. On December 1, 2011, Michael Jackson's family was invited to the X Factor USA competition. Michael's brothers Jackie, Tito and Marlon, as well as Michael's mother Catherine and Michael's children Prince, Paris and Blanket, were among the spectators at the competition. There was another person among the audience who attracted attention. Did the man in the hat, who is right behind Michael... And I believe that's Michael right there. Mm -hmm. Guys, Michael Jackson. Many family members attended the wedding of Siggy Jackson, the son of Michael Jackson's niece Jackie Jackson, which took place in 2017. And of course, Siggy's uncle Michael Jackson did not leave him alone on this happy day and attracted attention by entering a similar mayor disguise that he had previously entered in his ghost clip. Michael watched... He's wearing the same disguise. Mm -hmm. It's exactly the same disguise. He thought... Maybe people will forget it. Mm -hmm. Maybe people will forget I had this. But guess what? Videotape is forever. Yes, and it right. surfaced. Watch this. Take, just take a look at this. His daughter Paris and son Prince in the background. Atlanta, an American comedy drama television series developed by Donald Glover about the events that happened to two cousins who are trying to make a name for themselves in the rap market, had an episode called Teddy Perkins that was released on April 5, 2018. Teddy Perkins was a fictional character portrayed by Donald Glover. The details that the character told in the series and the tips he gave coincided with Michael one-on-one. -on -one. The details Teddy gave when he told about his brother were very interesting. He told his brother was alive, that he will come back very soon, that he can come back with a great album, and he couldn't go out anymore due to a skin disease. And he noted that their father behaved badly to discipline them just like Michael's father, Joe Jackson. And for the photo of his brother, they used a photo of Michael Jackson that was taken in the past. The face area of the photo was photoshopped. So, in short, the series wanted to officially introduce Teddy's brother as Michael Jackson. But that wasn't the real shock. Next up were the Emmy Awards. The character of Teddy Perkins also attended the ceremony. But while it was expected that there would be Donald Glover portraying the character in Teddy, we saw Donald Glover side by side with Teddy. So. Okay, so you understand what he's saying. If you don't, mm -hmm. tell me. That uh, it could be a different disguise. It could be Michael Jackson in the audience. We wouldn't even know it. Yeah, well, here's what, this, what, what he's mm -hmm. saying. Mm -hmm. You see the African-American actor there? Yes. Mm -hmm. He portrayed... You see the guy standing next to him? Yes. Okay. There shouldn't be two people standing there. There should only be no. one person standing there. Mm -hmm. Donald Glover is the African-American actor standing there. Right. He portrayed the character of Teddy Perkins mm -hmm. in the series called Atlanta. Mm-hmm. Okay. But how could he be portraying Teddy Perkins when he's standing next to Teddy Perkins? That's true. Okay? Mm -hmm. That's where we're going with this. You're going to see something you have not seen before, behind-the-scene photos. Oop, hold up. Did I just mess this up? Oh, sorry. Michael Jackson. But that wasn't the real shock. Next up were the Emmy Awards. The character of Teddy Perk Body, who has hey. also been mentioned with allegations that he is Michael's secret son, together with the sons of Michael's older brother, Jermaine Jackson, Joffer Jackson and Your Majesty Jackson, a boat party was organized as a family. But there was someone else on the boat besides the family. Someone was getting the attention on themselves. While everyone is overwhelmed by the heat in the sun of Miami, which is known for its hot weather, while walking around in short-sleeved t-shirts and entering the sea to cool off, there was someone who stood out quite a lot with a long-sleeved shirt, a tie, trousers, and a fedora hat. 
The person who can stand out in this heat with this outfit either does not want to be recognized or has a sun allergy. It fits someone very well, doesn't it? Someone with an allergy to the sun needs to disguise to get together. And I, Listen and look at I the way Dave Dave talk. speaks and acts. Take a listen to this, Milia. Does it remind you of anyone? And there was Michael. So, could Dave Dave actually be Michael Jackson, trying to live a normal life? And is it possible that Michael? <laughs> And there you have it. Yeah, you can jump right out of van like just like a, a, a dead guy. Wow. <laughs> there you have it, kid. <laughs> so tell me, what do you think? Is Michael still around? By the way, that was Florida. Yeah, I, I believe 100% he's still alive. I mean, a yeah. dead guy doesn't just jump down of a van. So. Yeah, I'm convinced that mm -hmm. Michael pulled an Elvis. Mm -hmm. I said it when it happened. Mm -hmm. I was one of the first people to say he pulled an Elvis in it. I mm -hmm. said it's just like that. Oh, yes, absolutely. He pulled an Elvis. Too many evidence. So much, so much evidence that it's not. Mm -mm. If you can present to me evidence mm -hmm. that Michael Jackson is dead, right. I'll bring you on the show. Mm -hmm. Show me what you got, and I'll apologize to everybody. Right. But I don't think that's going to happen. No. I don't think that's mm -mm. going to happen. Nope. All right. Now, Amelia, mm -hmm. let's talk a little bit about what we got here. We have yep. Um, yep. some strange and unusual occurrences here. Why would someone... Um, go through the trouble? Why would, yeah. Why would they go through the trouble to, to do this? N number one, if they are... If they're still alive. Number two... In in the cases where the celebrities did actually die, and the situations are so convoluted, so mysterious, mm -hmm. that even the medical examiners screwed it up. And I just have to shake my head when I say that. Mm -hmm. You, you got to tell me, like, are, are we missing something or are we stupid as a people? Are we stupid or are we gullible? Or is there something going on in the celebrity world we don't know about? Why are they? What's going on here? There's something going on in the celebrity world that they don't want us to know about. Oh, tell me then. What is it? Uh, they um, A lot of these celebrities probably could be just tired of being celebrities and they just want to live a normal life like us. And they're like, you know what? I should have known what it was like to be a celebrity. Okay, I did it. I'm done. I just want to be a normal person again. And that well, or... They always say, it's a very good point, Million. They always say you can't go back. Yeah, that's true. You can't go back. But then a lot of the time you'll be missing it and say, you know what? I want to go back. But if you want to go back, you have to pay a price. Well, how about instead of going back, starting over? Yeah, you can start over. What but you it do comes is you, you die, you die, quote unquote, and go through all the motions, have a funeral. Have Do you realize you're talking about Michael Jackson's funeral? First of mm -hmm. all, the casket was too small. They're, they were telling people right from the get go mm -hmm. this is, he's not. Here, folks, he's not inside this box. Mm -hmm. That box is empty, okay? Yeah. Do you know that no one, no one was allowed at the cemetery? They That's... buried an empty box. You know they did that, right? Mm. We have pictures of it. That's too questionable right there. Say, okay, why am I not allowed at the funeral? Why? I mean, at the cemetery, why is that? Wait a I... minute. It's not yeah. just... 
Yeah, no. It's not just that the press wasn't allowed. There mm-hmm. were family members that weren't allowed. Makes you hear what I'm saying? That. Mm-hmm. Makes me question that, like, why wasn't family members allowed? What was the big secret? Oh, okay, am I still alive? You know, why is Makes you that wonder, happening? doesn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. Makes and- you wonder. You're talking about Michael Jackson's family mm-hmm. that weren't allowed to his funeral. Why? Because yeah. there's something going on. Exactly. And okay, there was not any tears one. shed either. I'll give you another one. Mm-hmm. Okay. Elvis Presley died on August 16th, 1977. Mm-hmm. Okay. On August 17th, mm-hmm. the next day, mm-hmm. on August 17th, mm-hmm. 1977, they had a fully made custom casket. Custom. Shipped overnight. Who does that? That is impossible. <laughs> unless you, you unless you knew it was going to happen. Unless you already had it all planned and it wasn't going to happen until And days. that casket weighed 900 pounds. It took 12 full grown men pallbearers to pick it up. Um, And if you think that I'm lying, ladies and gentlemen, go look at the video for yourself. It's Mm -hmm. all over YouTube. Exactly. Go look for yourself. Elvis Presley's funeral. And you'll see the person that's in the casket does not look anything like the one that died. It's not Elvis. Mm -mm. It's not Elvis. Yeah. And then also, you know, we also have just a little bit of time here that we can talk about a little bit of Maryland here, which we had a little bit of time. We're going to talk about 20 minutes worth of Maryland and then Mm -hmm. we're going to get the hell out of here. Mm -hmm. Let's take a look. All right, hold on a minute. He is the author of a new book entitled The Empty Glass, a fact-based thriller about the death of screen icon Marilyn Monroe. Good morning to you. Good morning. It's been 50 years and we are still talking about the rumors surrounding her death. Right. Was it a murder? Did she commit suicide? Which right. one is it? Uh, what, what do we know here? What have you been able to find? Well, we've been able to find a lot of contradictory information. And the fact of the matter is, is that um, we, we can't say absolutely for sure what has happened here, but there are an enormous number of mysteries that persist. Conflicting testimonies, missing evidence, it just goes on and on and on. So all of that stuff sort of leads to the fact that this remains, you know, one of the biggest mysteries of the 20th century. So what specifically happened the night she died? What do we know? Well, we, there's a lot of, again, you can't quite get to the bottom of any of it, but the baseline is she was living in a house that she had probably bought about six months before in Brentwood, California. She was living with a live-in housekeeper named Eunice Murray. Uh, Eunice said that around midnight of that night, 50 years ago tonight, she found, she went into the hall and she saw a light under Marilyn's door, got concerned about that, knocked on the door, got no answer, called her psychotherapist. The psychotherapist came over, broke the window to her bedroom, got into the bedroom, found her dead on the floor, I'm I'm sorry, on the bed with the phone in her hand. And this was at 1230 at night, but they did not call the cops until four hours later. So all of those events don't quite line up. What's the who does that? Uh, nobody. Who <laughs> dies, and you wait four hours to call the police? That's a first of or all. The, that's or, the, or the coroner or the ambulance. Who right. who waits four hours to call the ambulance? Uh, no, somebody Only that's trying in, to get their story straight. Uh, oh yeah. Only in Hollywood. Okay? Yeah. Only in Hollywood. A uh, Hollywood, I should say. Yeah. <laughs> Take a listen storyline here what's the issue with that is there an issue in that storyline well the issue with that storyline is first of all the next day they changed the time frame so it went from 12 30 to 3 a.m right and there's also an, an enormous number of other testimony from people like peter lawford an actor uh joe dimaggio jr's son that contradicts that yeah. central thesis i'm just telling you what eunice murray said happened sure. that was the first version your thesis is that she was murdered no my, not necessarily my thesis is she could have been murdered and who would have done it well under that thesis you know you i hate to be really speculative here but you can't get too far in the landscape of this case without running into the name kennedy 
Uh, and I think there's absolutely no doubt at all that the Kennedy brothers were having sexual relations with Marilyn Monroe. Multiple brothers. Yes. Uh, Bobby, the attorney general, JFK, the president of the United States, uh, they sort of handed her off to each other. I don't see how anyone can say that did not happen. Could it have just been really shady, not completely thorough police work? That, you know what, maybe Marilyn Monroe, she really did just commit suicide, and the right investigation didn't take place afterwards. She could have committed suicide, sure. However, the big thing that argues against that was the, the, the amount of drugs that were found in her bloodstream. In order to have the level of drugs that she had in her bloodstream, she would have had to have taken at least 50 sleeping pills in an incredibly short period of time uh, in order to, to get to that, right? And in addition to that, there was no water glass found in her locked bedroom, and there was no water in her locked bedroom. How does that happen? Yeah, it's a mystery. Didn't we talk about that, Amelia? We talked exactly about that because yep. you have to take, you have to have water to take all those pills. And there wasn't any. There wasn't no water at all whatsoever. None. None. None, None at all. All kinds of pill bottles mm -hmm. and nothing to wash them down with. Nothing to wash them down with. Exactly. And guess what? Mm -hmm. Nothing in her stomach either. Nothing in her and stomach. And while Monroe's tragically young death has been a magnet for gossip and conspiracy theories since the very beginning, a new book asserts that everything we think we might know about Monroe's death is wrong. Over the years, people have speculated that everyone from President John F. Kennedy to the mob was really behind Monroe's supposed suicide. However, Mike Rothmiller, a former detective with the Organized Crime Intelligence Division of the LAPD, has claimed that Monroe's death was really orchestrated by none other than the president's brother. Let's talk about that for uh -huh. a second. I'm going to stop it right there. Uh -huh. Let's talk about Bobby Kennedy's involvement here. Everybody's very quick to point the fingers to the president. You know, well, the president had the power to order her death and blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. People forget that the attorney general also has the, the power to order somebody right. dead. Mm -hmm. Okay. I mean, look, we just have to say it the way it is. Mm -hmm. And there what? was a rumor, too, that a day before that she passed away, that he, uh, he came to see her and they were arguing. He was, oh, you're going to see that and you're going mm -hmm. to hear it. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't the day before, it was that mm -hmm. day. Oh, that day. Okay. Oh, that day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We know for a fact, we know mm -hmm. for a fact that Bobby mm -hmm. Kennedy was there in her home that day mm -hmm. because it's already, it's because it's documented. Mm -hmm. You, they, they can't get out of that. No, they can't get out of that. It's documented. He was there. And I think, you know what? This is a good spot to go back to it. Here you go. Mm -hmm. Shell, the night Bobby Kennedy killed Marilyn Monroe, asserts that Monroe's death was not really caused by a drug overdose. Instead, the former police officer claimed that Bobby Kennedy spiked Monroe's drink. The and by the way, the guy that wrote this book is a former cop. Believed to have had affairs with both Mary Kennedy brothers, was allegedly threatening to come forward and tell the world about her relationship with the famous politicians. Of course, the ambitious Kennedy family couldn't let that happen. According to Rothmiller, on the evening of August 4th, the younger Kennedy appeared at Monroe's home in a fury. The couple soon became engaged in a fiery fight over her diary, which contained potentially damning entries about the Kennedy brothers. Kennedy dem Okay. Mm -hmm. You and I talked about this diary before. Right. When everybody wants to know what happened to the diary. Okay. Mm-hmm. Found out what happened to the diary. Oh, good. And you're going to shit your pants when I tell you who had it. I wouldn't. Uh, was it going to surprise me? <laughs> it's going to shock the shit out of you. Hmm. Everybody was like, oh, Marilyn's got a diary. She's going to write a tell all book. Mm -hmm. she go, she, and she was, too. She was going to write a book. Mm -hmm. But Bobby Kennedy, J. Edgar Hoover, president. They, the president, uh, the, uh, the brothers, you know, Kennedy brothers. Uh, I'm sorry. Sorry, folks. Mm -hmm. My teeth are slipping. Bobby <laughs> Kennedy's brother, the president, mm -hmm. John Kennedy. 
he and J. Edgar Hoover and Bobby, mm -hmm. they couldn't let that happen. So they were determined to find that diary. Mm -hmm. There's one problem, though. She never gave them the diary. You're going to hear where Bobby Kennedy took the diary. Hmm. But there's one problem with that. Mm -hmm. She didn't give him the real diary. She gave him a book. Oh. You know who had the diary? Um, probably what, Mrs. Kennedy? No, Frank Sinatra. Ah, the trusted friend. The trusted friend. Mm hmm Marilyn wasn't stupid. She was a very, very smart mm -hmm. woman. She knew that they were going to try and do something stupid. Mm -hmm. Okay. So she, she went ahead and she said, Frank, hold this. If anything happens to me, you know what to do with it. Mm -hmm. I believe, I really believe this. Mm -hmm. I really believe that Marilyn Monroe's death is partly what got President Kennedy killed. Mm -hmm. I also believe it's what got Bobby Kennedy killed years later. I think it's all tied in. It's a circle that just, it, it came full circle with the Kennedys. I believe that, Amelia. That they opened up that diary, and that's what did it. Yeah, and I and I think that Sinatra, because you're going to hear what Sinatra said. Watch. Mm -hmm. Mandated she hand the diary over, but Monroe refused. The argument went on for a long time until Kennedy finally handed Monroe an unpleasant tasting drink, telling her to drink it. After drinking the whole glass, Monroe laid down and never woke up again. After her death, Rothmiller claimed the LAPD recovered Monroe's diary, and the entry seemed to confirm she was planning to talk. Researching through the LAPD's papers, Rothmiller discovered the potentially incriminating entries Monroe wrote in the days leading up to her death. According to Rothmiller, one entry from the week... The diary that the L.A. Police Department had mm -hmm. wasn't... It wasn't the version that Marilyn was going to write about so she had two different diaries then she thank you very much she had two there was it's like a bookkeeper mm -hmm. that wants to keep two sets of books you got the one you show the irs and then you got the real copy for your business so you have like the real one and the placebo one basically exactly mm -hmm. it's a very good way to put it Watch. Before her death read, Frank Sinatra, Peter, and others were there. Frank said, I can't keep my f mouth shut. He told me to get out. I don't know why he's treating me this way. What happened to me? I was drunk. I don't remember. Did I have sex? In the next entry, which had an angrier tone, Monroe reportedly wrote, They are not calling back. Bob and John used me. I told Peter they're ignoring me. I'm not going to stand for that. I'm going to tell everyone about us. Her final entry, written the day before her death, apparently read, Peter said Robert will come tomorrow. I don't know if he will. Until well, we know that he did. Because mm -hmm. you just heard the story. Till his death, Bobby Kennedy denied even being in Los Angeles the night Monroe died. However, according to Roth Miller's book, Peter Lawford, John F. Kennedy's brother-in-law, confessed to the former detective just before his own death in 1984. Peter Lawford came clean. Peter Lawford was married to um F I'm sorry, was was married to Bobby Kennedy's widow, Ethel Kennedy. Okay. Okay. Now, follow, it's very twisted, just follow it. Mm -hmm. You know, we gotta remember they all they all yeah, married they like this. It's like a <laughs> Yeah, it's really messed up. Lawford apparently said that he had been in Monroe's home that night and witnessed the whole thing, although he claimed that he believed Kennedy had merely slipped a sedative, not poison, into her drink. A few years later, in 1988, Lawford's fourth wife, Patricia Seaton, revealed that Lawford was called by Monroe on the night she died. She also said that Lawford claimed he recognized her call as a suicide gesture, but ignored it nonetheless. By the way, that's Ethel Kennedy, mm -hmm. Amelia. That woman right there, she was married to, um, to Bobby. Okay. 
okay, at one point. After Bobby Kennedy was assassinated, she and Peter got together. That's the story anyway. ...said that Lawford claimed he recognized her call as a suicide gesture, but ignored it nonetheless. Yeah, he felt guilt about it. He felt a lot of guilt about it. Those incidents seemed to haunt him a lot. Rothmiller also claims that this knowledge came at a price. Mere weeks after hearing Lawford's full story, Rothmiller was apparently attacked by an anonymous motorcycle-riding gunman who shot him in the back and side with a semi-automatic pistol. Rothmiller suffered life-threatening spinal damage, and fearing for his life, he never came forward publicly to talk about what he had learned, until his book was released in the summer of 2021. According to a 1992 report in the Los Angeles Times, LAPD investigators believe that Rothmiller faked the attack to collect a disability pension. But as bold as his claims may be, Rothmiller stands by both Lawford's word and his allegations against Bobby Kennedy. Discussing Lawford's confession, Rothmiller wrote, It was clear he had been carrying the burden of guilt for many years, and in all likelihood, this guilt had destroyed his career, and sadly, him as a human being. If I So, if you know anything about Peter Lawford, he drank himself mm-hmm. to death. And I think he did so because he felt tremendous guilt um, over, uh, basically over, uh, he was basically responsible Mm -hmm. for Marilyn Monroe dying because he didn't open his mouth and say something. Yeah, he could have put, brought somebody to justice for her uh, murder. Yeah, it's, um, Mm -hmm. you know, Amelia, it's a very interesting, it's a strange case to it really is. Mm -hmm. It's a very strange case that um, it's never going to go away. It brings more to light that shows to me that she was murdered and it wasn't suicide. Yeah, I I don't think we can argue that. I think mm-hmm. that's I think that's true. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that's true. The, the, you can't. I don't see how any person with a reasonably intelligent mind is going to look at this case and say, oh, the woman took pills and killed herself. No. Well, that would be okay if there were water there to take it with. Right. Even if, even if she, let's just for shits and giggles, we'll Mm -hmm. say she took a handful of pills Mm -hmm. with no water. Right. Well, there's going to be undigested pills in her stomach, won't mm-hmm. there? Right, or she's going to choke with them in her in her throat. So, ex, ex, that's a very good point. But guess what? Mm-hmm. They found nothing. Nothing. No. No. There was nothing in her system. No mm-hmm. drugs. No pills. Mm-hmm. No alcohol. Nothing. Yeah, I I just uh, found nothing. You know, just too, too much, too I many unanswered questions, with, especially with all this new evidence coming about. To me, I just, you know, I think they have a, another show that we probably can do later on about this. Maybe we can, maybe. I believe, I believe she was poisoned. Me too. Something happened. And you're, you're, you've never heard anything about poison in her system. No. Because that would open up a Pandora's box. But poison cannot be detected. Maybe, uh, he, of course, for him being who he is, could have found somebody said, "Hey, give me something that you cannot detect." Absolutely. Mm-hmm. You're, you're looking at a guy who is the the attorney general, mm-hmm. and his brother's the president. Oh yeah, they can get their they hands got on access to everything. And everything. I'll give you this, but you owe me. Yeah. And somebody came to collect, and they're like, "What are you talking yeah. about? I don't owe you anything." Oh yeah, I do. You do owe me. Mm-hmm. And that's probably what got him killed. What do we got coming up next week, Amelia? We're going to be doing the TikTok generation next week. God help us. <laughs> <laughs> the TikTok generation. Mm-hmm. Oh, my May God. May 1st and 2nd, which is Between my Tuesday. co-host and my wife, TikTok is driving me nuts. Oh, my <laughs> God. Can somebody explain to me what the fuck Snapchat is all about? I still have. Like, what do you do with Snapchat? Like, I don't. Um, I don't get it. I barely. I joined it just to see what it was, and I forgot what it. I don't even know how to use it. So I don't either. <laughs> I'm still. I'm trying to figure out how. What are you supposed to do? It's something about 
The only thing I understand is that you send pictures that's and all videos. I know too. <laughs> pictures and videos. Is that just, all? That's all I know. Anybody can show, tell us how to use it. Let us and know, And then I'm please. just trying to figure out, like, okay, what am I supposed to do? Just, like, sit and... I'm supposed to, like, take selfies all day and, like, send pictures? And what am I supposed to do with this shit? Anybody so can tell I, us I how just, to use I, it? I, I uninstalled it. Oh, I had to uninstall it. Please, it was making me nuts. Is it, you know what? It get, get out of here. You're making mm-hmm. me crazy. All right, so here's what we're going to do. TikTok generation next week. Oh my God, help me! <laughs> um, what else we got going on next week? And then on uh, May eighth, we're gonna have uh, the Matrix. Yes, and the Mandela Effect. And effect on May 9th. Mm-hmm. Yeah, May eighth and 9th. Mm-hmm. The uh, um, glitch in the Matrix and the Mandela Effect. Mm-hmm. We're going to take the deep dive. It's going to be. It might be running a little long that night. Mm-hmm. <laughs> might go down a couple of 15 or 20 rabbit holes, but we'll find, <laughs> we'll find our way out. Yes. <laughs> and on, I know it's a little, a little bit down the way, but on May 24th, mm-hmm. Wednesday, May 24th, we will have Joe Kahn. Mm-hmm. He's the executive director of the Institute for Free Speech in Philadelphia, mm-hmm. Pennsylvania. He will be here on the show with us to talk about mm-hmm. the pressing issue of free speech. A reporter was jailed in Texas. Listen to this one for asking a question. She asked a question and they sent her to jail. She's a reporter, isn't she? She's supposed to ask questions. That's your job. <laughs> okay. Yeah. My People own ask state. questions every day. People ask questions of the president. Mm-hmm. You don't see any of them going to jail. Nope. Yet. Isn't, yet. Isn't that the thing? Is a wrong question. Is a wrong question never asked or something like that? <laughs> well, maybe she asked the right question. Maybe that was the problem. Yeah. But maybe she asked she the wrong person. Ask the right question. <laughs> she asked the Here's right what question. we have to say to the judge in Texas. You're a fucking moron. Yep. Okay? And they're coming for you. Free speech is coming to take you down. Yes. Especially in my home state of Texas, damn it. (laughs) By the way, I made a prediction last week that came true. Mm Mm-hmm. Let me tell everybody what happened. Okay. On last week's show, I predicted that Tucker Carlson... If he didn't keep his mouth shut, was going to get fired. Well, guess what? He got fired. Yesterday, he got fired. But so did Don Lemon from CNN. Mm. Let me tell you what kind of institutions Fox and CNN are. They have no balls. They (laughs) fired CNN, fired Don Lemon over email. Uh. They fired him over email through his manager. Well, you know what? They they need to, well, they should have taken a page off of there for uh, Miss Clinton. (laughs) Tucker Carlson got fired when he showed up at the studio. Oh, boy. They say, you don't work here anymore. That's how he found out. When he tried to log in or? (laughs) So I got, huh? When he tried to log in? <laughs> no, he went to the studio. Oh, my goodness. No, he went to to Fox News. Mm. When he got there, they said, you don't work here anymore. Oh, my goodness. That's how he found out. That's horrible the way of finding out, you know. The, well, Fox News, remember, there's only... you can People say, well, Fox News is Republican. CNN is Democrat. No, they're not. There's only one party in this country. Only Mm -hmm. one party in this country. Uh It's the fascist party. Right. It's got the Democratic wing and the Mm -hmm. Republican wing of the fascist party. Mm -hmm. Okay. You can call Democrats and Republicans all day long, but guess what? There's only one party. Right. Okay. And they run both of them. Right. All right. Now, um, This show, 
Mm-hmm. What's the buzz podcast? We are going to do so. I'm, in fact, I'm saying this for the first time. I've not even discussed this with Amelia. Mm-hmm. Um, we are doing something that has not been done before. We are going to fight vehemently mm-hmm. for free speech, not only for our guests, right. not only for ourselves, Correct. but for those who have been victims of an oppressed society, an oppressed press. We are going to lift the veil and we will get you help if you need help. So that I will tell you is my commitment to the show, to you, to Amelia. Um, we are going to fight to keep our voices heard. Yes. And, and I will tell you out this. There. The day, the day that anybody tells me what I can and cannot say, I will leave this country so fast you won't know what the fuck hit you. No. And I will. Absolutely. Because if I'm going to live like a communist, guess what? Mm-hmm. I'll go there. Yep. Okay? I'll go there. Yep. And Four I will Amelia fight those Chapman. bullies too. <laughs> For Amelia Pipple Chapman, I'm Angelo, the mad dog, the Scipio. Take care. Be good to each other. Protect your First Amendment rights. Yeah. And remember, we do have a constitution yeah. of the United States of America. God bless you, folks. We'll see you God next week. Yes. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.